Three days from now will be the 1st of May. Happy May Day in advance to the workers. But it's also significant because we will be in May and the biggest opposition party, the National Democratic Congress, still don't have a running mate for the election that is seven months away. But who should be concerned about this matter? Should it be the new patriotic party, the party in government and opponents of the NDC? Should it be the NDC themselves or should it be civil society? If you believe in Omen, then it should be a worrying signal for the NDC themselves. Now, why do we say that? We say that because historically, since the year 2000, the NDC has done their best performance in 2008's election when the running mate was announced early. In 2000, Professor Mills, the candidate at the time, announced his running mate in September of the year 2000. It was Martin Amidu. In 2004, Professor Mills again announced his running mate in October, and it was Mohamed Mumuni. Enter 2008, and Professor Mills announced his running mate in April 2008 in this dramatic fashion. Professor Mills has named Honorable John Dramani Mahama as his vice presidential candidate for the 2008 election. But this editorial is not about Omen. It is about Flight Lieutenant Rollins, the founder and leader of the National Democratic Congress, two-time constitutional president of Ghana, and the longest serving president of Ghana after Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. It is about him. It's about his interest in this matter of John Mohammed's running mate. Welcome to this Thought Leadership editorial. Ghana, we now have freedom. Ghana, land of freedom. Toils of the brave and the sweat of their labors. Toils of the brave. So let's begin with the contestants. And you know that on this program we have done a full documentary about who the contestants were at the time. And that has been updated because, as we said in our poster, this matter is now in a home stretch and is heading to the table of the Council of Elders of the NDC for a crucial meeting. The meeting could happen any time this week or early next week. That meeting has a single item agenda. It's going to discuss John Mohammed's ideas for a running mate for election 2020. So there has been some changes in the list of John Mahama. Now, we're looking at it in a regional context because the NDC is looking to take power from the MPP from a last election where they were heavily defeated. So they are looking at the regional distribution of votes and how that could affect the situation. So we are looking at it regionally. Central region, unfortunately, seems to have been excluded because everyone thinks that the NDC has done enough of running mates from the central region. It would appear that every election since 1992 has had somebody from the central region on the NDC's top ticket. So in 1992, it was Cohen Kensenaka, who was a running mate of Flight's Lieutenant Rollins, Central Region. In 1996, Professor J.E.A. Mills, running mate of Rollins, Central Region. In the year 2000, it was Professor Mills leading the candidate. In, in the year 2000, it was Professor Mills, the leading candidate, Central Region. In 2004, Professor Mills, leading candidate, Central Region. 2008, Professor Mills, leading candidate, Central Region. 2012, Parkwesi Emisata, running mate to John Mahama, Central Region. 2016, Parkwesi Emisata, running mate to John Mahama, Central Region. So, if you look at it that way, the Central Region has been on every single NDC ticket. The groundswell of opinion, therefore, in this decision for 2020 is that enough of Central Region, let's go somewhere else. So where does the NDC go? President Mahama is from the Northern Region. So the three Northern Regions are excluded. So the other regional distribution is as follows. Western Region is thinking about Amako Fibwa, the former Minister for Energy and Member of Parliament for the Ellen Bele constituency. Western Region has a large population Western Region has a large voter population base, and it is believed that maybe this time the NDC should look at that. If they do, they may be looking at Ama Kofibwa as President Mohammed's running mate. Now, the Buna Hafu region is also coming up for discussion. It is the nearest to the three northern regions, but it's also up for discussion. And Dr. Stephen Opuni, who is the former chief executive of the Cocoa Board, is the one for the Buna Hafu region. There's also Mr. Eric Opoku, who was a minister in John Mohammed's government, who seems to straddle between Ashanti and the Bono Half region. And then there's the Eastern region. Now, the Eastern region, as we said earlier, comes out as a result of a prophecy from Prophet Nigel, who prophesied that the next vice president of Ghana would be a woman. 
and she will be from the eastern region. So, the lot falls on former Attorney General Marietta Brew upon still firmly in the race for the eastern region. And then you have the greater Accra region, which might have the Honorable Joshua Alabi because it is said that he did well in the race to become the NDC's flag bearer. And so Joshua Alabi could represent the greater Accra region. But the big story is for Mashanti because it would appear that those who have spoken to John Mahama say that he believes that the choice must come from the Ashanti region for many reasons that we'll get into. And which Ashanti is he thinking about? We've already spoken about Dr. Kwabena Dufo, the former governor of the Central Bank, and also the former minister for energy. Dr. Dufo will come to this with a bit of record because it was in his time that Ghana had the lowest, the single digit inflation for many, many months. So that's a clear record of Dr. Dufo. And he was the former governor of the Central Bank. Dr. Dufo is one of the key Ashanti candidates. And there is also my friend, Mr. Kwame Iwadaku, who is the only Ghanaian to have been appointed as the MD of BOST and TOR at the same time. Mr. Iwadaku has been doing some work in the Southern African region where he's reported to have been quite successful advising governments on energy. And he has just entered the race as a young blood also from the Ashanti region. So these are the candidates and this is the distribution that is heading to the National Council. There is also the Volta region and the very curious commentary coming out of a choice for the Volta region is guess who? The member of parliament for Clotikoli constituency, Dr. Ezanato Rollins, daughter of Flight Lieutenant Rollins. We'll come back to the Dr. Rollins candidature in a bit, but for now let's understand and let's get into our main theme. The role, the influence, the capacity, the interest of Flight Lieutenant Rawlings. First of all, let's go to the NDC Constitution and understand what the National Council represents, who are in the National Council, because this matter is going to a National Council meeting, is firmly on the table as a single agenda. So who are the National Council members? Let's actually begin with Article 45 of the Constitution of the National Democratic Congress. Now you can see it on your screen. It says, the party's presidential candidate, which is John Mahama, shall nominate his running mate in consultation with the National Executive Committee and the Council of Elders. And that's what I meant, the Council of Elders. We are talking here about the, the matter going before a Council of Elders meeting. So that's the first thing we need to know. Now, let's go to the National Council, and that's in Article 25. We'll read a few lines of Article 25. On your screen now, you can see it. Article 25.1a says, There shall be established a Council of Elders composed of not more than 17 members at least four of whom shall be women. So this meeting, this all-powerful Council of Elders um, that is formed by the National Executive Committee will have 17 members, an odd number. So if they decide to put the matter of John Muhammad's suggestions of running me to a vote, we will certainly have a majority and a minority. B says that apart from the founding father, which is Flight Lieutenant Rawlings, other members of the Council shall be appointed by the National Executive Committee. C says that the founding father, of the party, which is Flight Lieutenant Rollins, shall be the chairman of the Council of Elders. That is very, very instructive. J.J. Rollins is the chairman of the Council of Elders of the party. Now we have what we are looking for. The matter is going before the Council of Elders. The Council of Elders are actually uh, led by Flight Lieutenant Rollins. He is chairing the meeting. This editorial thought leadership expression is supposed to to position and locate Flight Lieutenant Rawlings in all of this rigmarole of the recent NDC politics. That's what we're going to do with you tonight. And you can send your messages uh, if you agree or if you have some more information for us to consider. You can send your messages to Good Evening Ghana official. So let's now come and talk about the candidature of Dr. Zanetta Rawlings, JJ's daughter. So, okay, first of all, the NDC uh, people are divided into maybe three groups when it comes to Rawlings and their fortunes at elections. The issue is, should they, have, should they necessarily have a candidate, a vice presidential candidate that J.J. Rawlings backs, or should they ignore Rawlings in the choice? That's, that's a very important matter, and that has affected Dr. Kusibuchi's candidature significantly. For those who think that you need to have a candidate that Mr. Rawlings likes, they think that Kusibuchi is not the one, because you know that there's a fractious relationship between Kusibuchi and Rawlings, and, and Rawlings doesn't like him. If you go and have Kusibuchi as your running mate, you're going to have a situation where J.J. is going to speak against the ticket. And when he speaks against the ticket, something happens. Then there's another group of people who ask the question, what really does J.J. carry in Ghana today? The young people don't even remember. They just know about him. How many votes does he carry? You know, he's formed the NDC, yes, but, you know, 
that's a school of thought that is carried by you know who ahoy people fancy confederacy and all of that that's their view of the matter that you don't really need jj rollins to do much and they demonstrated it when they took power under professor mills they pushed mr rollins as, as far back as they could and and mr rollins was upset and so during the period when professor mills was president periodically mr rollins would say something against professor mills administration because the so-called fancy confederacy who took power real power under the Mills administration and were running the show, their school of thought is that forget about Rawlings. He has nothing to offer the NDC. He has nothing really to offer anyone. His popularity is gone and they even suppose that the so-called mythical popularity of J.J. Rawlings was created by them, was created by their themes and their theories that they used the media in the olden days to create. So they, they actually believe that J.J. owes his popularity to their intelligence. That's, that's interesting, but that's what they believe. So they don't see Rawlings as a big deal. And so when Mills became president, they just sort of pushed Rawlings aside, including important decisions that were taken by Mills before Mills won the 2008 election. One such decision, incidentally, is the selection of John Mahama as Mills' running mate. At that time, Flight's Lieutenant Rawlings was not in favor of the selection of John Mahama as Mills' running mate. But these guys went ahead, convinced Professor Mills that you can select. That is why there was so much drama at the announcement of John Dramani Mahama as a running mate for Mills in April 2008. The drama was occasioned by the fact that they wanted to push this angle, knowing that Fly Lieutenant Rollins preferred Betty Moldy Drisu, Mohamed Mumuni, Ekospio Gabra. He, he had other preferences, and they wanted John Mahama. So they think that, yes, we defeated him in 2008. We went ahead to win the election. So really, no. Then there's a third school of thought. says, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can say all you want to say about Rollins, but be careful. Be careful because whenever he speaks, whenever J.J. Rowling speaks, it carries a lot of weight. The media will run it as a headline story. So you don't want Mr. Rowling speaking against your candidate. You have to be very, very careful about that in a crucial election that you are going into the election, an election that we assume that the MPP are leading at this time because of everything that has happened and because they came from a one million a superiority vote from four years ago, you would assume that the MPP is leading and the NDC needs to come from behind and overtake the, the MPP. The NDC is almost in the same position as they were in 2008, where they have to do a lot of work to overtake the MPP and to deliver the election and, and to rule Ghana. So those, that third school of thought is saying that you can say all you want about Rawlings, but this is not the time for you to have a candidate where Mr. Rawlings says, I don't like this man. You know, so, and they also give the example of the stability that uh, John Mahama enjoyed between 2012 and 2016. If you compare that to the Mills stability between 2009 and 2012, you know, Rollins was after Mills. He was always after him. He was saying this about him, that about him. He was after them. But if you look at the John Mahama period, Rollins was not as after John Mahama as he was after Mills. What's the reason? Because Rollins publicly said that he endorses the choice of Vice President Park Wissie Misata. Now, this was an event of a funeral of a legendary Ghanaian, Mr. Casey Hayford, who ran the Volta River Authority for a long time. And during this funeral, uh, Mr. Rollins made a public statement that I like Park Wissie Misata. I, I think that uh, John Mahama made the right decision. You can see the screenshot on your screen from Ghana Web now. So that then explained why during that period, Rollins was not particularly against them. But towards the election, going towards the election, it appeared that Mr. Rollins was not giving them the entire support. And it came to a crescendo when he didn't attend the last rally at Accra Sports Stadium, the big, famous NDC rally. I've never seen a rally as big and as exciting as the NDC's last rally for 2016 campaign. We had a lot of discussions in the studio when we came back from the Accra Sports Stadium and the kind of crowd we saw. J.J. Rollins significantly was absent from that rally. He didn't say anything. He just didn't show up. The MPP had held their last rally before this day, and it was held at the trade fair, and John Ajakum Kufo was present at the MPP rally. But J.J. Rollins was missing from, from the NDC rally. Now, if you go back a little bit to the last time Mr. Rollins attended the NDC rally, soon before the election itself, this was Cape Coast, the big one. If you listen to the words he said, uh, you will realize that um, he put the party people on edge. This is what he said. I will return what I have to say till after the elections, when I will come around the country to share with you how I think we could restore the kind of strength that can take us well into the future. There are certain weaknesses that we need to deal with. 
So that was Flight's Lieutenant Rawlins. So he didn't say much. He said he will speak after the election. And after the election, he seemed to have been on the side of the government and on the side of President Akufuado in many of his public uh, hearings. Now, the problem here is that and our position on the matter is the third position. The third school of thought is our position. That JJ might not have a popular appeal. That is to say, if he runs for election, people might not necessarily vote for him. But within the context of the NDC and within NDC politics and within the choices that uh, non-committed voters will make for the NDC, JJ's opinion is very important. Now, why is this so? The people in the party who think that JJ is not much, he should not be given too much credence, they have never said it publicly. They have refused to speak against JJ publicly. They have not been able to muster the courage to talk against JJ publicly. So I'm referring to the fancy confederacy, to Toby Kwaches, Kwame Nahoys, Atua Hoys, all those people who make the case privately that you can do without JJ. They have not had the courage to make the case publicly against Rawlings. Mr. Rawlings is the one who leads the PR narrative of the NDC because he speaks frequently, he speaks on national issues, he's speaking on this issue or that issue, on that we have to congratulate his PR machinery because JJ is usually in your face when there's a national issue and he, he carries the anti-corruption brand, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Also because they cannot have the courage to speak against JJ because if you look at the context of the NDC and if you compare it to the MPP, there's a contrasting observation. JJ is the founder of the NDC. Whether they like it or not, he, he brought them into being. He's the founder of the coup d'etat of 1979 and 1981. Both were illegal events, never mind what the transitional provisions of the Constitution said. Both coups were illegal events. Nonetheless, they came, they came to being. And after that, when they formed the NDC, even though they will tell you all the time, and Dr. Obeda Samoa writes in his book about the efforts they all made to form the NDC, etc., etc., even the effort that Mrs. Rawlings made, when they came to find and identify a founder, they were compelled by their own history to make Flight's Lieutenant Rawlings the founder of their party, the single founder of their party. So all of them have come from him. Then he wrought the elections in 92 and won it. And he had an election in 96 and won it. We have been told of stories about JJ not playing any particular role in winning the elections and they do all the groundwork and they bring him to their Crassport Stadium to speak at the final rally and etc. etc. We heard all those stories. But the Ghanaian people know that JJ won the election and he's the, he's the face on the ballot paper. So, so yes, they have refused, they have not been able to speak against him for these reasons because he is really their political godfather. So it's difficult for them to speak because they haven't spoken. And JJ is the one who speaks. He carries the narrative on his side. The narrative is with him. So if you go and choose a running mate where JJ Rollins says something against a running mate, the non-committed Ghanaian voter, and even the young NDC voter, is looking at it in a certain way and thinking that, have we chosen the right person? And radio stations are going to run amok with, the, with JJ's commentary against the running mate. You don't need that at this time. John Mahama doesn't need that. So this NDC division that we talk about, where does John Mahama really stand in this matter? Where, where's, does John Mahama believe that JJ is important or does John Mahama think that JJ is not important? So if JJ is thinking Ashanti region at this time, which is more likely what we think that JJ is thinking, if you're looking into JJ's mind, look at the way he has conducted his own elections, look at the way he has used his Ashanti people at the front line of his party, Christina Mwakunyama, PV Obi, and others, Kwame Pepra, and, and we know how he has played the card with the Mensha Palace as well. Fly Left and Rollins has played many cards with the Mensha Palace as far as sustaining his leadership is concerned. Coming out of that situation, we suspect that if JJ is thinking about a running mate for John Mahama, given that John Mahama comes from the north, if he's thinking about a running mate from the south, we think JJ will point him straight directly to the Ashanti region. That's what we think. Now, those who are arguing against Rawlings' effect and his influence and the kind of protocols that should be accorded him, are they thinking about this as well? Let's pause there and talk about Dr. Zanetta Rawlings because some people are saying sarcastically that, okay, you want to please Rawlings, no problem. 
His daughter is qualified to be running mate. She's over 40. She's a member of parliament. She's qualified to be running mate. So those of you who say you want to please Rollins, okay, throw her daughter's daughter on the ballot. And then we are done. And end of story, we go home. Council of Elders meeting will end in five minutes. If we say that the, the founder, the chairman of the meeting and the founder, Mr. Rollins, here is your daughter. He's a running mate. End of story. It will be impossible for JJ to speak against that. He will have to speak for that. And he will have to speak for the NDC campaign. But is that something that they want to do? Has Dr. Rollins really consolidated her own constituency? If you look at Dr. Rollins and her politics of uh, 2012, you will find that she won the constituency marginally, and it might be time for her to actually consolidate her constituency before she gets into the running mate mood. So Dr. Rollins will be looking to consolidate her constituency because this time, the MPP are not going to have another candidate. The MPP have united behind a single candidate, a young man who is an accountant in the area, is a driving force, and it looks like he, he's driving into Dr. Rollins, and they're going to have a major, major contest that the entire media will be watching uh, at the Clotic College constituency. So Dr. Rollins, it's not time for her on these running mate matters yet. So coming back to the National Council events, we think that John Dramani Mahama, in his mind, if we have to look into his mind, he might think that I need to get a candidate that Rollins will not say anything about. He may not say anything positive, but he shouldn't say anything negative. If he thinks like that, then a candidate like Kwesi Ahoy uh, to be promoted from the Western region is completely out of the matter. It will never happen if John Mahama is thinking that I need to get a candidate that a chairman of the Council of Elders and also the founder of the party likes. If John Mahama has to get that, he's not going to think about Kwesi Ahoy out of the question. He's going to think about a candidate that Mr. Rollins likes. Could it be that John Mahama has already had conversations with Mr. Rollins and that those conversations have not ended and that is why... Uh, this announcement has delayed, we think, yes, John Mahama has been having conversations with Fly Lieutenant Rollins. Those conversations have not ended conclusively, and that is why this announcement has delayed. We think that what is conclusive about their conversations is that they will go to Ashanti region, and the criteria that Rollins has put on the table for the running mate that he will support is a criteria called integrity. He wants people who have integrity. Whatever integrity means to him, I don't know, but integrity means integrity. So Rollins has already said he wants to put in integrity. He's not going to back a Kwesi ticket. That's not going to happen. If John Mahama wants to go the Rollins way, he's not going to back Kwesi Is he going to back Dr. Dufour? I don't know. Is he going to back Kwame Iwadaku? I don't know. Is he going to back another candidate? I don't know. But he thinks that whichever candidate comes out must be a candidate of integrity and must not be a candidate that is affiliated to the Fanti Confederacy. So, John Mahama has heavy shoulders towards the end of this April and into May. He would have to make his announcement at least in May because uh, April is gone now. He has to make the announcement in May. He has a few people on his cards. What is going to happen? Where is John Mahama going to go to? Is he going to go to the John Mahama camp, which will have a candidate? Is he going to go to the Fanti Confederacy camp, which will have a candidate? Or he's going to value J.J. Rawlins' opinion 100%. We think it's the last one. Let's keep our eyes open. Let's keep our eyes on the ball. And this program and this platform will keep bringing you the thought leadership matters about what is happening in the NDC with the running. It's an election year, and we think that it's going to be uh, a good year for our reporting. Never mind COVID-19. By the grace of God, we think it will be over soon. That's our thought leadership editorial tonight on the latest on John Mahama's running mate. Ghana, we now have freedom. Toils of the brave and the sweat of their labors. Toils of the brave.